Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, EASA publishes proposed standards for light drone certification, SWIFT's high-altitude long-endurance UAS completes its first flight, and the NTSB concludes a KABC news copter was struck by a drone. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. EASA has published a proposal of airworthiness standards for the certification of the vast majority of light unmanned aircraft. These standards will greatly contribute to the safe operation of drones for a wide variety of services, such as parcel delivery in urban environments, railways, and power line inspections. The proposed standards are known as Special Condition Light UAS and will be applicable to unmanned aircraft under 600 kilograms, operate in the specific or certified category in accordance with Regulation EU 2019-947, which enters into effect on December 31st. Most drones currently under certification in EASA will adopt this certification basis. EASA is taking a flexible approach by defining certification requirements, which are objective and proportionate to the risk of the operation. Detailed means that compliance will be addressed in a second phase, but due to the expected variety of products and operational concepts, a strong link will remain with projects and EASA will continue to assess proposals from applicants. The proposal is open for comments until September 30th. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. UAVOS and the High Altitude Platform Station Industry Alliance have joined together to promote the use of high altitude solar powered autonomous aircraft for facilitating global research missions, communication, and reconnaissance from the stratosphere. Because they are operated in the stratosphere, high altitude unmanned platforms are capable of providing near ubiquitous coverage, which avoids ground clutter and significant latency issues. UAVOS's HAPS knowledge is based on test flights for more than 1,000 hours of HAPS flight tests at altitudes of up to 66,000 feet. In collaboration with its partner Nordic Unmanned, Schiebel is using its camcopter S100 UAS to monitor ship emissions in Danish waters in support of the Danish Maritime Authority and the Danish Environmental Protection Agency. Specifically, the S-100 is being used to measure the ship's sulfur emissions to check compliance with EU rules governing the sulfur content of marine fuels. Measurements are transmitted in real time to the EMSA RPAS data center and the Thetis EU in Portugal, which creates alerts for authorities to follow up on. The FAA and the Switzerland Federal Office of Civil Aviation have reached an agreement in harmonizing domestic and international safety standards for UAS. The participants intend to collaborate under a declaration of intent on UAS issues of mutual interest and benefit. The primary objective of the DOI are to provide opportunities to engage in research and development, exchange ideas and information, provide coordination with other government entities and stakeholders, and to collaborate on other initiatives and projects determined to be of mutual interest and benefit in relation to UAS operations. An e 216 took four passengers on an aerial sightseeing trip over the sea around Fisherman's Wharf in Yantai City, a national tourist attraction in China. The flights were part of e World Flight Tour, which is aimed at demonstrating the reliability and versatility of its passenger-grade AAVs through safe autonomous flight and various commercial use cases. As of now, e passenger-grade AAVs have completed thousands of demonstration and trial flights in 21 cities in six countries. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Well, fellow pilot, right now we are at home, feeling nostalgic for Oshkosh, and I'm sure you are too. So to celebrate the Oshkosh we all love, and to help you stay productive, we're having our biggest sale ever, 22% off all King Schools courses through August 4th. So we hope we'll see you next year at Oshkosh, but for now, get your 22% off all King Schools courses by using the code... Oshkosh. 
If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. In partnership with NASA's Ames Research Center, Swift Engineering's High Altitude Long Endurance Unmanned Aerial System has completed its first flight from Spaceport America in New Mexico. The only U.S.-made platform in its class, Swift's flight team performed a full system check, validating the vehicle's configuration for high altitude continuous surveillance missions. Designed to operate unmanned at 70,000 feet, the Swift Hail UAS offers 24-hour persistent and stable upper atmosphere operations for commercial and military surveillance, communications, and security applications. An affordable alternative to satellites, the 72-foot solar-powered air vehicle weighs less than 180 pounds and can safely carry up to 15 pounds of payload for missions. Using the agency's mission cases, we developed a cost-efficient power and propulsion system that can withstand harsh temperatures radiation, and stratospheric conditions, while providing and storing enough energy to enable persistent long-duration flights, stated Andrew Street, Vice President of Technology at Swift Engineering. The Swift Hail UAS was awarded two technology patents and received airworthiness certification from NASA in the FAA Certificate of Authorization, enabling the unmanned aircraft to fly in commercial airspace. After an extensive investigation, the NTSB has concluded the KABC Air 7 news copter that was forced to make an emergency landing last December after being struck in its tail was in fact hit by a small hobby drone. At the time of the accident, the helicopter was flying at about 1,100 feet when the pilot and passengers on board heard a loud pop. Upon landing, the pilot noticed a large gouge on the horizontal stabilizer of the helicopter as well as a series of dents and scratches on other places of the aircraft. Neither the pilot or the passengers were completely sure of what hit them. However, the pilot did say he saw a flash of light, which could have been the red and green navigational lights on a drone. And while no drone was ever located, laboratory examinations indicated that the shape and dimensions of the damage to the horizontal stabilizer were consistent with the configuration and dimensions of many popular small drones. A small mark inside the larger round dent was also consistent with the propeller shaft diameter of a small drone. Additionally, infrared examination revealed material transfer of polycarbonate polymer, which is also commonly used as construction material for hobby drones. And that wraps up our airborne demand for today. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to aubsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. Have a great rest of your day and come back Friday to wrap up the week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited.